الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به وعليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القران العظيم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير املا صدق الله العظيم all praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify Allah and we give thanks to him for his blessings his favors and his bounties upon us I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah he is alone and he has no partner and I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger Ibadullah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, He says, Wealth and children are the adornment of the life of this world, but the righteous deeds that last are better in your Lord's sight for rewards and better in respect of hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who has given us whatever we have in life. In the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that what we have, it is just a sort of adornment in this life. What is lasting, what is important, it's our righteous deeds because that is what will bring us tremendous rewards with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is better in, in respect of hope that you have hope of meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when, when you perform righteous deeds good deeds it, it, it is within us the expectation that when we meet with Allah when we stand in front of our Creator on the day of judgment that we will uh, that concept of good and bad that concept of heaven and hell it, the hope that we had in our lifetime we are hoping that it will be manifested on that day when we will be placed in paradise because of what? Not the wealth, not the children that were things that uh, they were adornment of this world, adornment in this life. But what will matter? It's the righteous deeds, the good deeds, the things that we had done to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we are living in a time when there is so much uh, dishonesty, there is so much uh, uh, lies, uh, there is so much fabrication, and, and because of this dishonesty, the lies and the fabrication we have seen so many 
have been tormented and punished and so many have lost their lives so many their their properties have been taken away from them so many have lost their freedom they, 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 that urge to move from one place to another because of people fabricating people telling lies people being dishonest that's the type of world that we are living in and, and, and if we look at the where a lot of it is coming from uh, in, you know, just leaders, elected officials are talking about it, uh, the, the social media and how much it has corrupted people, it has corrupted our young ones, it, 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 they, they are lost in, in terms of uh, their thinking, their ability to, to think properly. And so today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, I, I just want for us to just go back to a little basic and make sure that each one of us, we, we are striving to implement, inculcate, try to motivate people to just follow the simple practices of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so that when when we see people, when we see one another, we understand that yes, there is the presence of Islam here. We 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 see people, their their attitude, uh, being different from those who have been corrupted. We see people. Their, their, their whole demeanor, the, the, the way that they, the, their whole, whole outlook, it is that of people who have some piety and righteousness within them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Quran, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Whatever the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given you as laws from Allah subhanahu wa taala, follow it. Whatever he has forbidden for you, he says this is haram, this is unlawful. Stay away from it. And that's how we we need to look at this life of 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 ours. You know, Allah tells us in the Quran, say. In kuntum tuhibbuna Allah fattabi'uni yuhbibkum Allah wa yaghfir lakum Allah says in the Quran say in kuntum tuhibbuna Allah if you love Allah then follow me follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the very simple things that he did in his life that made a, a difference follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabi'uni yuhbibkum Allah Allah will love you Allah will forgive you your sins we all make mistakes and we all want that hub that that love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today my dear brothers and my dear sisters we we see muslims who sometimes you, you have to wonder if there is there are Muslims the way that people behave we, we see young children they don't have that respect there is no you know compassion uh, it's all about uh, vulgarity you know the, 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 the speech it's it's not you know, that beautiful speech that comes that you know speaking to people in a beautiful way you attract them and you bring them towards you all all that we we see around us sometimes there is not even the greeting of salam say salam to one another this is what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he taught us very simple things so that the 
presence of Islam will be within us. We, we, we are being told to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sits with the, the, the son of Umm Salama and he says to him, Ya Ghulam, Sammillah, wa kul bi yaminik, wa kul mimma yali. O young one, begin with the name of Allah, eating. Begin with the name of Allah. Eat with your right hand and eat from that which is nearest to you. The, the, the presence of Islam. Every time you do something, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look, look around and, and you would see in the, in the Muslim community that sometimes these very basics, they are, are, are gone, they are, they are missing. That you talk to someone and, and you don't feel as if that person is expressing anything that is about his or her deen. The, the, the language, it, it's like a foreign language. You, you don't have that connection with the person as if that person is really one that shares the same faith like you. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he went with very simple things. How often do you call a home and you hear on the other side, Assalamu Alaikum? Maybe it happens with many of us, and maybe it doesn't happen with many of us. That's what we are being taught. When you see one another, you meet each other, you greet each other with salam. You, they, they may see that number and they know it is one of my relative who is calling. And he or she is Muslim. But the other person, the person on the other side says hello and doesn't even say salam. And maybe the one who is calling to doesn't even greet with that beautiful greeting of Islam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he emphasized it so much. And, and if we were to take the literal meaning of it, salam, when he said, لا تدخلوا الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحابوا أولا أدلكم على شيء إذا فعلتموه تحاببتم أفشوا السلام بينكم you, you know, It can have a, a very deeper meaning but if we take it literally the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he is saying that you will not enter paradise until and unless you believe and you will not believe until you love one another. And then he says, Awala adullukum ala shay'in idha fa'altumuhu tahababtum. Should I tell you of something, if you do it, you will love each other. Afshu as salam bainakum. Begin by that literal way. Not, not the, the, the deeper meaning of the peace, but just extending that greeting unto one another. Say salam. Say assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam. Allah is peace and He loves peace and He wants to see peace within us. And that's how we, we begin it. Very, very basic. It, it, it changes the, the, the dynamics of our community, it changes the dynamics of our family. When, when we just go to these very basic things, you see children eating and they 
eat with their right hand and they don't say, well, I can't. Because they want to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they say, bismillah. And, and you feel happy. You know, you, you watch the, 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 the TV about what is happening in Gaza and when you see those little children the, the presence of Islam within them the, 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 the finger going up in the air showing that there is none to be worshipped but Allah Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil you, you see that presence of Islam within them it, it changes the dynamics of the community when we look at our communities, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we see that social media is taking over our communities. And, and, and what is being taught on social media, that is what is being spreaded in our communities. And so we have that responsibility to make sure that the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever presence within us because that is what makes us that beautiful Muslim community that we, we, we are always greeting we are always looking to uphold the Sunnah the traditions of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where you eat you drink you say bismillah you finish, you give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. You know, everything the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he taught us something to say that will make us different from other people. There are people who go to the bathroom and they don't clean themselves. Islam teaches us about, the, you know, the, that purification at tuhur shatrul iman cleanliness is half of faith but more so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us that when you go there for the call of nature remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as you leave also remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how beautiful it is when you wake up in the morning and you give thanks to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is the one who has given you life again. After you were made to sleep at night. How beautiful it is that when you go to bed at night, you, you, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if you were to die, that the last thing that would have been in, on your lips or in your subconscious are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reciting the, 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 the uh, Surah Ikhlas, Surah Al Falak, Surah Al Nas, reciting Ayatul Kursi, doing dhikr. And even if you were to fall asleep and didn't complete it, it, it it's in, within your mind. So, what was the last thing in your subconscious? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what makes us different from other people, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. And, and that's what we need to, you know, renew within our communities. Because the, the influences of uh, social media, it is overtaking our communities where only trash sometimes we hear from uh, around us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he, he taught us to have that connection with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yes, on social media, you can have that connection with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because there are so many reciters on social media, they bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we see people use it for the right purposes and some people use it for, you know, purposes that are not correct. You, you have great scholars on social media. They talk 
day after day and they try to motivate you and bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but how many listen to them how many have that connection with them we use it for different things and so my dear brothers and my dear sisters my my simple basic message to you as a reminder and to myself is that uh, we, we need to to change the mindset of our community we need to change the mindset of our family we need to reorient people bring them back so, uh, in, so that when you see them you see the presence of islam within them That sometimes you don't have to see them praying and fasting and giving charity, but the, the mere attitude about them, the, the mere behavior, the way they interact. How beautiful it is when you meet your brother, you meet your sister, and you shake hands and you say, Assalamu alaikum. It, it opens up the door to the goodness, it opens up the door to love. It, it, it makes you connect right away in a positive way. How beautiful it is when you, when you sit together and, and, and you, you hear the, the, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that people, they, 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 they're not only eating or, or sitting and having conversation but the conversation is such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always being remembered how beautiful it is when you sit in a, a little child began to recite the beautiful words of the Quran it brings joy to your heart and even if it's a surah the, the simplest of surah but that's the connection. That's what makes us different from other people. When you see a child and a child has that respect for mothers and fathers or even strangers because he knows that I'm talking to a Muslim. I'm talking to one who shares the same faith like me. That's how we need our communities to be, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. That's how we need our families to be. Remember, we all want Jannah. And there, there is a, a simple way to achieve Jannah. Don't be like people who reject Jannah. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Kullukum yadkhulul Jannah. Every one of you will enter paradise except the one who except the one who rejects paradise. And the companions they said, Ya Rasulullah, wa maya aba, and who will reject paradise? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Man atani dakhal al jannah wa man asani faqadaba. The one who obeys me. You follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Live life like him. The simple things that he did, practice it. That's obedience. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and the one who disobeys me, you know, we, we, we make other people influence us in a, in a negative, in a wrong way, and, and we do the things that are contrary to the teachings of our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said you have rejected paradise you don't want paradise so simple we all want paradise what do we do we obey prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we follow prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in, in, in our daily lives, the things that we do, that we make sure that it's in accordance with what 
our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought. Allah tells us about him in the Quran, وَمَا يَنْتِقُ hawa إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ yuha. He says nothing of his own accord except that which was revealed to him. That which came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so these very simple things in our lives, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, it makes us different human beings. That, that we are always expressing love and compassion, kindness. We, we always say beautiful things. The speech that comes from uh, our mouth, there is halawa in it, sweetness in it. And people get attracted to sweetness. You know, as much as uh, you may be a, 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 a diabetic person, you're suffering from diabetes, when sweet comes in front of you, you, you get attracted to, you want to have it. Some people can't even control themselves. E even though they might be at that stage, anything would be, uh, you know, uh, catastrophic to them. That's the, the deen of Islam. There is, should be halawa, sweetness in everything that comes from us. So that we attract people, we keep people connected. But sadly, we 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 see the the world that we live in. That there is so much dishonesty. There there is so much uh, uh, fabrication. There there is so much about uh, you know lies and uh, enmity and hatred that people drift away from others. The, the corruption that we have in the world today where people are fighting, uh, they're, they're resisting certain things. People are resisting that which is not, there is no halawa in it, there's no sweetness in it. People are resisting when they're being occupied. People are resisting when their freedom has been taken away from them. People are resisting when food and water and electricity and gas and the basic necessities of life are being taken away from them. That's, Islam teaches us that when you, you have that environment in, in which there is love and peace and tranquility, that it is an environment where people would want to be. They, they, you wouldn't see any type of resistance because they feel that they have been given the, the, the rights that God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has endowed upon them, that these are your rights and they're given their rights. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, it's simple. Let's look at our lives and try to make sure that what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has brought to us as lawful, that we take it and practice it. And what he has brought to us as unlawful, that these are things that we should not be engaged in, let us stay away from them. And let's start with the very basic. It may seem as if uh, it's not important, but the very little things that he has taught us with regards to our personal selves, hygiene, you know, certain things that we do every week, clip our nails, for example, the way we eat, the way we drink, the way we sleep, how do we go to bed? How we wake up? The way we interact with each other. 
you know, the clothing that we wear, the modesty within it, all may seem very simplistic, but at the same time, it, it, it shows that you belong to a community. You belong to the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless us and guide us. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may he save us from the torment of the hellfire. Akulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum. Wa li sa'ir al-mu'minu min ayat min kulli dhamb. Fa astaghfiruun inna huwa al-ghafurur rahim. Alhamdulillah, My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Al-Quran, وَلْتَكُنْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةِ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرُ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Let there arise out of you a, a group of people who will invite towards goodness. The very basic things that I talked about, they're all about goodness. Let there arise out of you a group of people who will enjoin right and they will forbid evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And these are the ones who will indeed be successful. So, we would like the entire world to gravitate and move in this direction, that the entire world will be from among that group. But there is right and wrong. People have been shown the two pathways, wahadainahu and and we have shown man the two crossroads. Some will choose the right way, and some will choose the wrong way. I implore you, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, be from among the group that will invite towards good and join right and forbid evil. Maybe your whole family is moving in the wrong direction. And you might be the only one who can save them. That you can move them back into the right direction. Maybe there is no presence of Islam in your home. Maybe Allah is never being remembered in your home. What did the Prophet ﷺ said? He said about the home that remembers and the home that does not remember. He said that the home that in which Allah is being remembered and the home in which Allah is not being remembered is like a home that has life in a home that doesn't have life. And so you might be the one who will bring life to your home by just practicing the very basic traditions of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you might be the one just by, you know, in a very subtle way, you're eating and you say Bismillah aloud and you make the rest of them know that yes, we should be saying Bismillah when we eat. And you might be saying Alhamdulillah when you finish eating and you make them realize that yes, we need to say Alhamdulillah because everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The very basic. And as you enter your home, you say Salam, Assalamu Alaikum. And they might think that you're crazy. 
There is no one there why are you saying salam? But we follow the traditions of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he tells us to say salam as we enter so that shaitan would not follow us. And those who don't say salam when they enter, shaitan says he didn't say salam. Perhaps I would be able to share his food also with him because he will not remember Allah when he begins to eat. And so let us each one strive to be from among that group. That group with that will be the successful ones in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The group that it invites towards good. The group that enjoins righteousness. The group that enjoins what is right and forbid what is wrong. And even if it is only the basic, very simple things, at least you are making a difference and that's what is important. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and have mercy upon us. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate us. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he saves us from the torment of the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who are sick that he grant them speedy recovery from their illnesses. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who have return to him that he from among the believers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expand their graves for them and make their graves row them in Riyadh al-Jannah that he makes their graves gardens from the gardens of paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admit them into Jannah to the Firdaus. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and to have mercy upon us. لَقَدْ أَمَرْنَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ wa ta'ala فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ حَيْثُ قَالَ إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى الله من خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وأمر وثمان وعليم ونستة الباقين والشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بالنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على الدين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم ارحمنا وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم اشفينا واشفي مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم انصرنا وانصر عبادك في كل مكان اللهم انصر عبادك في غزة في فلسطين اللهم انصرهم اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي لكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله على نعمهم واشكروه على آلائهم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة